So welcome everybody to the Monday, January 29th meeting of the Conway Select Board, which at 6.30 p.m. will become a joint meeting of the Select Board and Finance Committee meeting. So as a reminder to everybody, this is being recorded for your viewing pleasure at home, and, um, and it's also live on Zoom, and that if the Zoom fails, the meeting will still proceed anyway, live. Um, Call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda. Vote to approve the minutes of January 13th, 14th, and 22nd. Um, um, I'll note that the meetings of January 13th and 14th, should, the minutes should be approved with a notation that everything discussed in the meeting is moot and no longer valid. <laughs> <laughs> Due to subsequent intervening events. Um, I move to approve those minutes. Second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Next item, vote to approve the accounts payable warrant in the amount of $89,314.38, the payroll warrant in the amount of $132,867.80, and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $33,050.40. And uh, you know, I have reviewed those warrants. The accounts payable warrant, the first one in the amount of 89,000 was notable for the open space committee's submission of a $1,900 bill to mow the Bigelow Meadow, which is part of their uh, project for next year. But it also notably included and significant hourly labor charge to make rabbit, rabbit homes. And uh, we look forward to hearing from the Open Space Committee in the future what exactly that expenditure was all about. So, um, but we were expecting an expenditure, just not that much. So. Meetings, oh, um, so motion to approve those three warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Chris? None here. Erica? Uh, none since last Monday. Alrighty, so I went. There was a school committee meeting. Um, uh, there was a capital meeting of the school committee. There was the meeting on Saturday that I went to, which was the public meeting for the MVP town uh, Flood water management, water river management uh, in town center program at the Conway Grammar School that Nick um, Fluvio, Fluvio Morphologist, uh, Nick. Fluvio Geomorphologist. Yeah, there you Nick go. Nick Miller. Nick Miller and, uh, and uh, Rosalie Duarmish um, from GZA put on. It was. Uh, the program had 49 residents go to it, which was more than the grammar school cafeteria could safely accommodate. We had more than the chairs that they had available. So there were people that had to sit out in the hallway. Um, but uh, they Nick stayed and answered everybody's questions, everybody's comments. The overwhelming majority of questions had to do with stormwater management and the desire that their neighborhoods be included in future stormwater infrastructure engineering and improvements. The people from Cricket Hill were there in number. The people from Fields Hill were there in number. Uh, people from Poland Hill were there in number. And then the Baptist Hill. Those seems to be the, the neighborhoods that are particularly concerned with this issue. It's also where most of the homes in our town are. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and Nick answered all those questions. and gave everybody his card to call them about uh, more of that. And so that was, I thought that was a, a, an impressive program, lasted all, the, all the afternoon. Um, and to those parents that were there to the sixth grade Conway basketball game against Deerfield and wondered why so many chairs that were set up were removed and moved to the cafeteria. Sorry about that, that was me. I didn't know you had a basketball game. Um, but, uh, yeah, other than that, do we have a public comment? We can wait till 
you can wait until there's something to comment about if you want. Or you can, what? Oh, I'm what? here for another reason, but I was at that program. I know. I thought it was fabulous. Yes, I did too. Fascinating. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, unfinished business is where we normally would have the category of oh. web stuff. It's in there. It's online. It's, it's online. <laughs> um, and you know that that was that that a lot of the questions were about that. It's also what today's mail was all about. Um, uh, new business. Um, vote to a, a point. Sia Stewart to the Sustainability Committee. Sia, 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 to the Sustainability Committee through 6.30.25. So um, thank you for coming. And the reason we ask, like this is, like, you don't have to do this every appointment. This is just like a first, this is your chance to introduce yourself to the town. Because people watch this and um, just share a little bit about yourself and what drew you to, you know, you don't have to, I'm not, you don't have to, just, your, the microphone is yours. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> okay, am I looking this way? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Sia Stewart. I've been in town two years. Um, before that, I was on the South Shore for about 30 years, and before that, I was in the Valley for 10 years. Um, and so this was, when I retired, this was my chance to come back to this area that I love. Um, and I saw there was an opening on the sustainability committee, and it's an area that really interests me. I've attended maybe mm, three or four meetings of the committee, and I think there's a place for me to make a contribution, so that's why I'm here. Um, I have, there are many reasons I'm interested in the work of this committee. Uh, one of them is that I have three grandchildren, and I would like them to have a livable climate. So I'm interested in anything I can do along those lines. So thank you for the opportunity. And when you go to your next committee meeting, um, you can remind them the, the one task that the select board has uh, given to the Sustainability Committee for a recommendation is um, the, the issue of street lights, street lighting in town and et cetera. So that, that was a while ago. We are- They're working on I know, it. I know you're working on it. And it is, it actually is a way more complex issue than people realize. But um, every time we get the monthly electric bill for our street lights, um, I think about that. So, uh, because it costs way more than people think, street lighting. Um, and it's when the number of complaints that we have about it ten, is also interesting. We talk about this a lot. That we all saw the studies that show it now show a negative correlation between the presence of street light and crime. The more, the closer the street light is to a residence, the um, well, we always thought, oh, that makes it safer from burglary. It's the exact opposite. That uh, that it, burglars apparently like not having to have flashlights and just being able to use a street light to see what they're burgling. Whereas if they're having to skulk around a house with a flashlight, it tends to attract neighbors' attention and you know, whatever. So um, I, those things, those things always interest me. The counterintuitive research that comes out that changes the way you thought about something. So that's all. <laughs> so sorry. I digress too often. Um, anything, any other comments for Sia? No, just thank you for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. participating. Thanks. I move to appoint Sia Stewart to the Sustainability Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Sia. Thank you. Thanks. It's for a term ending June 30th, 2025. Actually, since I see Suzanne and Deb on this from the Forest and Trails. Uh, excuse me, can anyone hear me? Uh, yes. Slickboard, you're muted. I can't hear a word oh. you're saying. Oh, dear. 
I am so sorry about that. That was my bad for oh, dear. forgetting to unmute. Well, at least it wasn't anything you needed to hear. But. All right. All right. It's okay, because it's recorded. Since since Suzanne and Deb are here, um, I'm going to move the item, the item about the discussion of the cultural respect easement. Um, since I presume that's why you're both here. Yep. Okay. So. Um, there, Suzanne, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I was I was trying to get it to work on my laptop, and apparently, it's not working in Chrome. So yeah. technology. Yeah. All right. So. Um, you want to tell us a, a little bit about this? Sure. So um, we're actually here to request two things. Um, the first being we're requesting your support in our endeavor to um, draft in collaboration with the local Nipmuc community a cultural respect easement, which if the town approved it, um, would probably be held by the Native Land Conservancy. And this easement <clears throat> would afford the Nipmuc community access to the town forest, um, in general, things such as holding ceremonies there, um, sustainably harvesting plants traditionally used for medicinal purposes or other purposes. Um, in addition, it would afford protection of the town forest in perpetuity. Now, all of this is predicated on um, us being able to partner with both the NIPMA community and the Native Land Conservancy. I think there's a good chance of that. I, I reached out to both parties and th there seems to be interest. Um, generally, the, the biggest hurdle is gaining mutual trust. Um, towards that end, what the committee is hoping to do is hold a fundraiser as a show of commitment and goodwill. And so that brings me to the second request which is in order to do that, we would have to set up a, a, an account for donations specifically for this purpose. And that is something that we're hoping the board would vote on and approve tonight. Do to hear that? That's part? No, it's our accounting part. The, the, oh, the second request was that the town set up and approve, yes. and approve a method by which people could make specific donations yeah. for this and, project. Yeah, and I just spoke with our town accountant tonight, and we're definitely going to have to do some research into that, and if it could even work to make donations to, to funnel donations to a private organization. So, we, 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 they are a nonprofit. I, I understand that. But our, you know, the, we would need to do some legal research and some financial research. We probably want to check in with the Department of Revenue just to make sure that everything, you know, if this were, were to be approved by the board, we would we would need to know ahead of time, you know, have that figured out how it would look, and and get approval from le both legal counsel and financial counsel. But other than that, I I don't. I would imagine we'd be okay with with, with doing that. It's, if you can raise money, that's a that's a good thing. De just a couple of thoughts. Uh, I mean, Deb, was there something you want to say? Were you done? Did you want to say anything else, Suzanne? I, I, I just want to reiterate. You know, Phil, you and I have talked about trying to protect our woodlands because there's no Chapter 62 or anything like that to help. Right. You know, keep it at, at conserved. 
So this would just add a layer that, you know, we could keep it as a woodland. So it's kind of a win-win situation, I think. Yeah, so... And I think it's, it's a long-term, it's, it's going to be a long project. It, I, it's not something that's going to happen immediately. It's, it's going to take a while to implement, but if we get all parties to agree to it, then I think this would be a good thing for everybody. And, and one of the parties that has to agree to it is town meeting. Only In Conway, only town, right. only town meeting can grant easements on town property. Um, right. If I may, I just wanted to um, caution, we, we probably shouldn't be requesting donations of anybody until we get the legal and financial strategy settled. Does, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, obviously. Well, okay. Just uh, obviously, we, yeah. we wouldn't do anything yeah, okay. like that until the account is set up, assuming that it gets approved. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. And then, in terms of like getting help with the warrant language, I I wonder whether um, either of the other parties have ever obtained a cultural easement. Uh, yes. Uh, from, from another but town, and and could you could you supply with examples of the warrant language in those cases from looking back when that item was passed by those town meetings so that we would not have to reinvent the wheel? So, well, I, I don't know. I could look into that. The, the cultural respect easement that I have a copy of is actually from the Dennis Conservation Land Trust. And they enacted in an in easement on all of the properties that they own outright so they're not a, a that's not a municipal um easement so uh i would have to check with the executive director diana ruiz of the um, native land conservancy to see if she could possibly share such language with me because I know that she does hold or their organization does hold I believe I, I'm quite certain um, they do have other municipal uh, land easements yeah, I mean, but I can check into that yeah I mean it's it's an interesting it's an interesting idea I think it would make for an interesting town meeting discussion too um, and I, uh, you know, that we, we our, our, our town forests are somewhat unique in the sense that we have very few restrictions right now on their usage. Um, as we have very few town bylaws that govern personal behavior at all, um, including in town forests. Some people want more restrictions on personal behavior, but it's always, we have very few. You know, so there are things that people already, could, lots of things already that people can do in our town forest that, for instance, they would not be able to do in the state forest adjoining. So I probably shouldn't talk about that. Um, but, uh, you know, but I, I don't know. I personally always like that. Um, anybody have any questions or thoughts about this they want to share? I'm, I, I'm just curious about the, I mean, I don't, I don't think we want to vote on anything that we don't know that it's, whether or not it's, I, 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 would, I will definitely speak with DOR and like I, did, I said I just we did have a quick conversation with, with Mike Coachella um, who would need to look it up and see if it's he was trying to find the statute tonight but yeah I look that up and, but I mean, he was suggesting that we check with DOR as well mm -hmm. about it. No, in theory I'm totally in support yeah I'm just curious about the language of the easements and what would be offered um, Ceremonies and foresting of medical uh, plants is one thing, but like building structures or cutting down trees, you know, like, yeah. you know, that that would obviously make a big difference. So that's what I'm curious in seeing is just the language of the easement. Yeah. So so what I can say is that the specifics um, would have to. be drawn up in collaboration with the NIPMOC. And, and so, you know, uh, it, it would be a process and it would be a negotiation and it would be, you know, various stakeholders involved. So, uh, yeah. 
I, I can say that the Dennis Conservation Land Trust easement uh, was pretty, is pretty vague. It doesn't have a lot of teeth in it, <laughs> if you will. And part of the reason for that was there was uh, a lack of unanimity um, on the part of the trust. So, you know, we can, oh, oh, the very specifics that, 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 you know, I can't speak to now, that, that, that would just, that would grow out of the partnership and, and, and what the town is, is willing to um, abide by. So. I, I think too, uh, we just wanted to give you a heads up that this was something we were looking at, not that to vote on it, but you know, that just to let you know that, you know, this is somebody we're talking to and we'll see where this goes. And yeah, and I you know, appreciate the heads up. I, it's an interesting idea. Um, the warrant will be closing, the warrant for the June town meeting will be closing sometime the end of April 16th. April 16th. And, um, so we, we do. So if it won't be that fast. Right. No, it won't be that fast. All right. This um, is all going to be that fast. Well, there's, there's pretty much guaranteed a December meeting as well these days. But, um, but all right. So we'll, uh, okay. we'll see where this goes. And hopefully it progresses further. And, and so I just have one, one question. whatever uh will you guys get back to us will you, you know how's that going to work um i i imagine we'll be getting back to you with the answers from about the donation the, the donation fund Absolutely. um and um yeah was so. this a was this a request from the nickmuck or was this something that you all were okay so no this this was our initiative okay so um would you be able to do some research on language for the easement to bring to the That's board right. and then That's right. yeah and then i'll do i know i just well she was asking about next steps so that's what i was saying so okay. next step you guys would provide some language for the easement and i will look up the financial end of things does that make sense well i think no, i think we can we may do the fundraiser whether we do the easement or not just so if we can find out about the whether we can collect donations yeah that's kind of the first step we we, we don't even know whether or not uh, the nitma community and the native land conservancy are, are are going to want to partner with us on this and just so you know so you know i personally in the town in general has in the past worked with david brule the cultural historian for the wampanoag nation i do have his number yeah that, that that's a little different yeah okay okay so the question is really can we legally do a fundraiser on behalf of another organization yeah so I guess that's right all right um, figure that out we, we will continue the discussion when we have more okay all right thank you okay thank great you. thanks thank you thank you thanks all right um, yeah. Uh, do we have yeah. five minutes? Five minutes. All right. Um, discussion and possible vote on a policy re requiring a report be made to the select board upon the discovery of damage to town property or equipment. <coughs> um, so this was, I guess, this was my idea, um, but because uh, this used to be a policy that. Um, was made to pre whenever there was damage to town equipment or property a report used to be made to the select board these things aren't happening anymore so we'd like to just formalize this policy and which would lead to the creation of a form that would uh, say that any every employee that is involved in the damage 
to town equipment or property has to report it to their department head. The department head has to fill out the form and forward it to the select board through the town administrator and the town administrator has to forward it to the select board. And uh, at each step of the way, failure to do so uh, may result in disciplinary action. So. Is there already a policy though? That that's um, there used to be, I couldn't, we couldn't find anything in writing, but this used to be the part, and um, it's, it, it's, this is for all departments, and the, you know, we have a lot of really expensive equipment, a lot of really expensive vehicles, and when, um, when things happen to them, the, we, we, we need to be notified. That's what would be my next, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. My next question would be, what's the minimal threshold? Yeah, like what? <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I was just gonna not even go there, just basically zero would be the minimum, just for the filling out of a simple form. I mean, we're mm -hmm. talking, the, the form would be, you know, like three cents, like the, the basic. So if I break this pen? Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, you I know, think I love you about that. Anything, anything <laughs> above de minimis. <laughs> is Latin for the minimum um, but but basically if it's going to trigger anybody's attention you would be you know something that would require money to be spent for its replacement or repair maybe that could be the hey Phil can I make a comment so we're already going to have this information Chris when we have the schedules at least for the heavy equipment right for capital purchase style yes, equipment, so we'll yes. Know. Which is lo large, large value. Right, the, the, the big ticket stuff's already in the process of being documented, so right. we'll have it. Actually, you won't though. You don't have who was responsible for it and what exactly happened to it. You just have the fact that it needs repair. No, that's not my point. My point is we know what it is for the large equipment already. Well, for the large equipment, but we're also talking computer. There's all kinds of town equipment that isn't necessarily. Yeah, that was, that's not, that's not the scope of my comment, my comment was simply about what's going to appear on the capital schedule. But I agree with you that there's other town equipment, technology, et cetera, that would need to be made as well. And so this is just no exception, everything. It's easy that way. It's just anything of value that must be fixed or repaired. Chief, you want to say something about this? Yeah, quick, just one quick message. I was a highway superintendent for 20 years, and the policy was that when we were talking about accidents, uh, the town vehicle was that when the accident took place, the very first thing you had to do was notify the board of slack. And at that point, if there was one in town, they came out to the accident scene immediately. So we'll see what went on. And then you had to fill out your accident reports and turn them into the board of slack. And that's how it was always handled. That's for automobile accidents. So if I'm, I'm like, what if like the police cruiser gets a rock in the windshield and the windshield has to be replaced? That would also be something that it would definitely be documented. Yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. Those are things that should, no matter what, at least um, be brought to my attention so that I can make sure that our insurance carrier knows about. Right. It. Yeah. I would hope that if a heavy piece of equipment were, get in, were to get into a crash, you would we would be notified. Yeah. If the cruiser gets into a crash, we would have state police do it. Right. Especially if it involves personal property. Somebody's personal property. That's all I can say. Okay. So, are we ready to vote on that? Well, what, what is the vote? Because I, I, I mean, if I could make a suggestion, it'd be that I do a little research and come back to you with a written yeah. policy. Um, I mean, all right. What do you feel? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I would like to. I mean, is it? It's just a vote to create a policy. Right, right? a vote to yeah. Not vote on a policy, okay. but to right. create one. Mm -hmm. so, Which okay. could literally be, you know, I don't know, three sentences that we. It already comes up with by the end of this meeting. It may already be a policy of town county just from the lack. I couldn't find it. Pay attention. Um, all the years. Yeah, I wondered about that. I couldn't find it. Um, but there might be. So this is actually a huge part of my personal job. So I, I do have a form. 
and rules and regulations about exactly what Chief Baker just mentioned. So I can present. All a, right. So let's vote. Let's vote. Let's take a vote to create a policy, right. and we'll we'll retreat to our separate corners and yes. <laughs> do research and uh, and then come up with the best product we can. Um, yeah, and, and, um, we're ready. And yeah. bring this back in a, no, in a week agree. or two. Yeah. Um, a week. All right. It may, if we can do this sooner rather than later, that'd be good. Yeah. Like I agree. Next week would be good. So, motion to create a policy requiring report be made to the select board upon the discovery of damage to town property or equipment um, with uh, the actual policy to be voted on and discussed hopefully next week. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks. Um, the, the last, the very last one before we can move on to the, is the vote to change the assistant treasurer collector Lori Hall's position to 20 hours benefited. So we talked about this last yeah. week. This is normally something that I would oppose. Um, but in this specific instance, I, 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 I'm in favor of this for this specific person, not for the job title, but for this person. Uh, because you know, as, as we discussed, she is basically being trained up um, as the eventual replacement for the treasurer collector, Jen Warner. Um, and when and if she assumes that position, we are not going to want to maintain the assistant treasurer collector as a benefit in part-time position. Then she's also going to be taking on additional she's, responsibilities she's going to be doing because a lot, of a lot of additional the change to our accounting. A lot of she's going to be doing additional things as well. Yeah. But um, and in discussing this, it's um, it's not that significant of a cost increase. The benefits that she would be. So speaking to the additional hours, so it's the, the two hours as you discussed last week for entering the data um, for uh, accounting, but there's also some funding left over in the town administrator budget, which was set aside for an assistant to the boards and committees. And we've had a really difficult time to find somebody to fill that position. And right now, both planning and CONCOM seem to be fine as they are. So my request to the board was going to be to, for the rest of this fiscal year, make use of some of those extra funds that I have in my budget to have Lori help me with getting our personnel files in shape. So hopefully. And I, you know, in, in figuring it out, it would be all of maybe, I think I have 6,000 in my budget, and this would probably cost between two and three, which would be about four hours a week. Um, so I move to um, change Lori Hall's position to 20 hour benefit benefited position as assistant treasurer tax collector. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. All right. Um, everything else, since everybody's here, we can get started with it. Do you have a We don't have a quorum. We can't. Okay. 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 Always holding up the oh, no, always, always holding up the words yeah, you are. Always usually. I haven't heard from Roy. That's all right. We got some more appointments since you're all here too. Um, uh, vote to appoint John Crane as select board appointee for the personnel committee, not just any regular appointee. Select board. <laughs> yeah. Second. Um, oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, that wasn't a motion. It was just. Yeah, and so. Um, so, you know, our, since there are other uh, personnel committee representatives here, are you in favor of John Crane becoming part of the? I am, and I will go on record to say that his volunteering was spontaneous and was not coerced. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan can, is witness to that because he was standing there. Okay, but right. I just wanted to make sure that that was okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, so since John is by this point a known commodity in town, he doesn't have to do the talk into the camera, introduce yourself thing, since we sort of used to you already. <laughs> um, anybody else, anything to say about that? What's the term? Uh, 
have a since June moment. to June 30th 2026 that is one of the things you're gonna have to watch out for you can't have everybody's term expire that right as you're starting up again you can't all expire right. your terms at the same time yeah and I can't remember but I might have done that this time uh -oh. I don't remember when yours does uh -oh. but uh -oh. it would be a year early because I did it last year yeah all right I looked through the bylaw and it didn't say anything about staggering and I thought, oh well I'll keep I, so I think I did I think I did Jones through twenty twenty six. Yeah. yeah. I don't it's remember what it's a five member committee. Is it no, it's three. It's only three? It, it it's used to three. be five. We okay. changed town meeting changed it to yeah. three at our recommendation okay. in the so hopes that we could get it started right. again. Right. Um, I don't remember what the date is on Allen's there. Right. Yeah. Um, what is this? What's your six thirty two twenty two or two six. Yeah. Two six and two six and you're probably two five, right? Yeah. That's slightly staggered. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you could alter mine too. Yeah. I mean, well, the, the thing is, is, it would have to be. If it's twenty-five, then it have to be twenty-four and twenty-six. We can't go right. an extra. So that was part of the conundrum. Well, twenty-four is we're in twenty-four. Right? Exactly. So, so we're in just inspire, June thirtieth. So we can do twenty-seven. Um, can we do? Yeah, that would be years. three and a half. And normally we don't do. Am I not? Correctly. Well, did it, does it, it would be three and a half because you start from July 1st. So that's what I'm saying. That's why I was like a little, yeah. do we want to give them five months on the committee? Yeah. But we can do that. We can put you down for, yeah, we for 24 and then we'll just reappoint and then we'll be yeah, we 27. Can do that just to have everything in order? Sure. That's fine. Sure. sure. Yeah. All, right. All right. So if you want to pen it in as 20. June 20th, 2024. Okay. June 30th, yeah. 2024. With the understanding that you're you're committed. <laughs> <laughs> he was all, right. not <laughs> all, all in favor of that appointment? Aye. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Who, who moved? I did. Phil moved. I seconded. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, vote unanimous. Congratulations, John. Thanks. Um, it was Jeff Lacey in there too somewhere, I think. All right, Jeff Lacey to the planning board to, to also fill a five month vacancy. Um, Jeff was unable to be here today, but he did submit a oh. resume. No, he's here. Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, Jeff, um, if you would, this is why we asked you to be here is to introduce yourself to the town. And, um, and um, explain, uh, tell us, tell the town something about yourself. That's weird because we had two people in the meeting uh, already. Sure, as it relates to a planning board right position. Yeah. Um, Just calm me. I moved here in September from Shootsbury. Uh, um, capital C, O-N-W-A-Y. Sorry. Someone's talking here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm apologizing. No, I'm I'm a newbie to town. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I, I I live on Graves Road with Marsha Lewis, um, and um, sold my farm in Shutesbury and uh, moved on over to Conway. Um, I had been on the planning board for 27 years in Shutesbury, uh -huh. and the zoning board for about 12, and I. Yeah, ended up as the zoning board chair, and I'm still on the zoning board in Shutesbury for a while until they stabilize, which I'm able to do because it's an appointed position. But uh, but I got off the planning board over there when I moved here. But uh, um, I've always wanted to be a service to the towns I live in, and uh, that's my area of expertise because I'm a professional planner. So that's wonderful. I'm glad you're. And you're a Conway resident now. <laughs> um, we're different than Shrewsbury. We have a bylaw that says you can only be a voting member of a community of a committee if you're a town resident. So, uh, so hopefully you remain one for good duration, whether appointed or elected. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll stick around. Good. Good. <laughs> good. Thanks, Jay. Uh, I have a question. Sure. I see part of your education is. Bachelor of Arts in Environmental Science and Hydrology. What is hydrology? Uh, it was hydrology and, and limnology. Uh -huh. um, hydrology is the is the uh, engineering aspects of water. Cool. And cool. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, we, need, we need one of those. We definitely need. Some. Well, <laughs> if you notice, that was 1979. Yeah. And uh, the, the other one is the study of lakes. 
-hmm. That's um, limnology? Lake ecology, yes. yeah. Yeah. All but again, that was a long time ago, and I'm a much better planner than I am scientist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We still need one. I move to appoint um, Jeff Lacey to the planning board for a term. It's just to, it's, oh, to, it's, right. it's it, it, for a term that is already ending, that, that the previous occupant had to vacate. So it's, well, it's elected position normally, so that's yes. why this is just a temporary. Right? Yes, and then, um, yeah, so the, in, the planning board is an elected position, so at the time, encourage you to go to come to the town caucus which is March I believe March something in this room and um, have someone nominate you for the for a full term coming up and then because uh, yeah but please do I'll nominate you if I'm here okay so, um, so you have an Iowa style uh, <laughs> we're pure we take our democracy okay. pure here <laughs> all right I will second Erica's motion um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. All right. And we can always write you in, even if you don't show up. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, that's likely to happen. The uh, way around everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, right. yeah. So uh, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to start with them on Thursday night then. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're you're appointed right now. Yeah. So. It, it's it's a lot better than the way I first got appointed to Shrewsbury Planning Board in '96. The, the, the town administrator just called me up and said, I, you know, months after I moved in, and he said, I heard you're a professional planner. You have a vacancy on the planning board. We really, would you be willing to serve? I said, yeah, sure, I guess so. And so he says, well, just show up at their meetings. It's uh, next week. <laughs> so I show up, I sit down at the table with them, and they go, who are you? <laughs> they said, oh, I'm your, I'm your new member. The select board appointed me. Oh, yeah? Nobody talked to me, I think, for three or four months. Oh, my gosh. It was, uh, they, they, they didn't do it right. So. Yeah, no. Anyway, oh. this is better. Yeah, yeah. We're better. Thank you. We're better. Although, Shootsbury does set a pretty low bar. But, yeah, we're better. <laughs> okay. Online, every other town in Western Massachusetts. Uh, 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 Thanks. Um, uh, yeah. We have a quorum. All right. Mm -hmm. Move to. Yep. I make a motion to uh, to commence the uh, finance committee meeting jointly with the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, thank you. That's six forty three. <coughs> um, and the first order of business is to approve the minutes from last week. Okay. Yep, I make a I, motion to approve. Okay, I'll second that motion to approve the minutes from last week. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, so we have historical commission, police, and fire tonight. And I know the police chief and the fire chief are both here. The historical commission, I don't think in the history of its existence has ever come to this, but it is also just a four hundred dollar a year budget. Um, yes, and that uh, I did double check, and it, it's just going to be level funded. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. We're done with historical. That's <laughs> quick theme, gross. Um, so. Uh, the historical commission level funded four hundred dollars for ever is what it's been. Um, they do their thing. It's okay. I'm okay just approving that budget without further discussion. But if anybody has anything to discuss, <coughs> we'll, agree. well, actually, we're not voting on these things today. But we okay. can, um, yeah. So. Um, Now you really have, now you are live and now you have a super um, Yeah, well you have to figure who's going to go first. Yeah. Um, well, numerically it would be police, but if we go by who showed up in the room first, it would be fire. So there's a conflict. I'll let someone else resolve. <laughs> Let's. Bob showed up first. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
reflects no new projects other than increased costs due to the economy rising and the cost of everything happening and it kind of a passed away and we all like to see it. So um, I think the salary line items are, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, they all stay about the same except for the secretarial position that uh, the town administrator and I have discussed. And they're trying to bring that salary or that hourly rate in line with what they get with other positions that they cover in the town. So that bring this $1,061 would bring that up to $1,061 brings it up to the rate that persons being paid in other positions in town. That's what that one is. All the rest of them will pretty much remain the same, except for they're literally we a cola. If you people vote a cola increase this next year, there will be an increase in that. Okay, the rest of the budget down below is radio fees. Radio fees have um, An estimated, I got, right now I've already, this year I've only got a $37 balance in it, $37.70 balance in it. Uh, and it appears that the increase in those radio fees seem to be through the Council of Government's radio, that they, the fees that they charge us, 20, $2,200 a year, something like that. And when we come into the budget season that we are right now, we never hear from the Council of Governors till like June what the rate's gonna be. Mm -hmm. So I've increased that just a little bit to offset. Maybe the won't, money won't get used. But I have to cover the basis. So that's what that is for. Uh, the dues have gone up. Dues, I've only got $25 left in the dues this year, so I've increased that a little bit to $900 from $830. That's organizations that we have to belong to. Uh, the next item, which is training, is a little increased uh, training. I have a deficit of $256.75 for pulling off the same training materials and stuff that we have used in the previous years for the grammar school kids. And it just is the prices have skyrocketed. This isn't for any new programs, any more different stuff than we've always used. This is just trying to offset what the cost is gonna be this next year. Phone rental, that stays the same. That's for the phone rental at the fire station, or the Clubhouse, the frame is really fall. We have to have cell phones. We have to drop down from $900 to $750 to get more in line with what it actually is. Uh, we've been getting a pretty darn good deal through, uh, I am not, excuse me, the uh, AT&T and uh, FirstNet. It operates the cell phone, this town cell phone that I have, which in a way has been very good for me because it takes my office phone and makes it portable and brings it in at the same time to my cell phone service so I can have my portable desk with me at all times, 24 hours a day. And I, be honest with you, and you may not know this, you never know when I'm gonna get a call. It could be four o'clock in the morning. Uh, this past year I had one at 1.30 in the morning. 
a concerned citizen. Uh, there's something that's happening in their house uh, that they were very concerned about. And, and, and it could be any time of day. So by having that phone switch over to my cell phone, the town number switching me over into my cell phone just makes it much more easier for me and the people that have to get a hold of me, in most cases in emergency, that I'm here for. That's what that cell phone basically is for. Uh, the gasoline and fuel, I've increased it to $700. Uh, I'm about uh, halfway through this year so far. Again, you don't know what, they went up to quite a bit, the price of fuel this last year. So I figured I'd better buy, run it up a couple hundred dollars just to be safe, to cover the basis. Supplies remain the same at $3,000. It's because I can all, I didn't raise them up at all because I figured that I can offset them with if the cost of something else that I had to buy this year is more than it was last year. I just, other things I will just not replace. Vehicle maintenance is $10,000. That stays the same. Uh, we're doing pretty good so far. We're up to about, uh, we still got like $6,500 left in the account for half the year. So we're doing good with that so far. I've got a few outstanding bills, like I had to have some uh, brake work done on one of the Trump pumpers. Brakes were starting to act up, so we had to have that worked on last week, so I haven't got those bills yet. But. Uh, equipment is from $10,000 to $12,000. And a perfect example of this was we have a valve that I'm going to hopefully try to replace this year on the back of our tanker that's leaking water. And this valve, which used to be $400, is now $1,860 for one valve. It's gone crazy. So that's just one item of, of many things. That's why I'm asking for that increase in that. The SCBA stays the same. And turnout gear, I left it the same rate there also. Um, our turnout gear is in pretty darn good shape. Um, and the reason I haven't asked for any increase in that, even though a new set of turnout gear, gear Turn on gear. Does cost more? Is our department size has shrunk some this past year because of several reasons. Uh, uh, the juniors that we cover with our, uh, our turn up gear that they have to use to be safe. We had six juniors this last year. They turned 18, and they've all gone off to college, and none of them coming back. Mm -hmm. So we went from nine juniors down to three now. And uh, so that, that's just one reason. Um, and like I said, the, the actual, anybody over 18 years of age, we've lost a few, some to death, some to uh, just new people either moving out of town or just, just don't want to be on the market. I haven't seen that, but it's mostly most moving out of town and stuff like that. Is taking place. I want to talk to you a little bit about that too because it puts us in a what I call a quite serious predicament especially during the daytime because right now for the last six months I have myself and myself only that I can rely on in the daytime. Uh, Ocho equipment has two firefighters over there sometimes they're on the roads through the day working for Orchard out of town. Sometimes they're available. If they're available, then there's three of us. Uh, but other than that, we have some other people that work self-employed. They work in out of town most of the time. Sometimes they can respond to calls, sometimes they can't. Um, and it, it does not look good for the fire department at all during the daytime. I'm talking from 7 o'clock in the morning to 4, 30, 5 o'clock at night. And it's, it's a habitual problem countywide. And I hate to think what we may have to do to res resurrect this problem. Um, we may be forced to put somebody on part time eventually, if you can find somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking that at this point, but you know, well, if something happens to me or, or 
I decide to retire, what's that going to that gonna leave the town economy right. in the daytime? It's, it's kind of a scary thing to think about. And I think we should address that in the near future here and have some really serious discussions about it as to what we should be thinking about in the future. Other than that, I think that's all my budget looks like. For a total of eighty-four thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven dollars, up from eighty-one thousand eight hundred three. Any questions for me? So you have a separate uh, thing for capital, capital requesting aside from the uh, fire engine replacement? No, I have no other requests other than the fire engine replacement. Okay. And you may want to know about that. I'm sure I discussed it last year with you too. Uh, do you need a separate capital request form for that again this year? Um, <coughs> yes, that? but it, 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 it's really easy on the new request form just to say this is an ongoing. You click okay. that. Okay. that. Um, you might want to know this now, and I, I and we estimated when we started three years ago. We started this three. Three years ago, we started it and estimated that it would be, because we paid 430 something last time mm -hmm. for a pumper, we estimated that the outmost cost, it would be $650,000. Forget it. Don't even think I ever told you that. Because the people this year are paying $650,000. Well, not three years thought ago. 750 actually. Well, some are 750 some are 650 I think Asheville just came in at right around 700 I think. They just got it. So, and it's a hundred a year. I just wanted to, you want to let you know that when it comes time to replace the pumper, yeah. that's not going to be enough money. Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's why we're putting by a hundred thousand now. We feel like a bar or something, but we're, we're so not too much. Who would have projected it would have gone down like that? Yeah. You know, you expect it to go up 10 percent, 15 percent. Yeah. It's like almost double. Yeah. In three years. Mm -hmm. Not good news, but I want to make everybody aware of it. That that's what's taking place. Any, any questions, Roy? No, no questions. Thank you. What's that? Before I leave, can I ask the board of selectmen to do one other thing for me? Could you uh, the uh, vote on those two appointments from oh, here? Yes. Um, I move to appoint Adam Baker as Deputy Forest Warden and Chris Herman as Deputy Fire Chief. Do we have to do those separately or can we one? Deputy Fire Chief. It should be separate. Yeah, okay. okay. You would know because you took this. <laughs> they're, they're, they are being asked, they're moving up in positions simply because the past gentleman that has my Deputy Chief Ron Ox, who passed away a couple months ago, held both positions. So. Oh, okay. So I move that we appoint Adam Baker as Deputy Forest Warden. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I move That's unanimous. Appoint Chris Herman as Deputy Fire Chief. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. And <coughs> it's been past practice from the Board of Selectmen for years that they appoint the Deputy Chiefs and I take care of the appointments under them. I have advanced, uh, at least by moving everybody up one position, advancing me into to fill another uh, Lieutenant's position, and I have a fill that with a uh, Gemma Vanderhill. So that's the first girl officer we got on the department. And she does a great job. And, uh, first girl officer. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I think she's going to be great for council. She's Absolutely. She's amazing. Gemma's great amazing. for the town. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. <laughs> All right. The show begin. <laughs> Don Bates, good evening to you. Good evening. How are we all doing? Good. That is fantastic. Good. Good. Mine's not all fancy on my machine. The printer was acting up on me. So I've never done this before, so where do you want me to start? Uh, you can just go line by line. Yeah, line, by line. All right. Well, the first two were just a stab in the dark. I just threw them out there because I am in a contract year as well. Um, so I wasn't sure what to put in there. So I was going to put 95,000, but I figured for sure I'd get laughed at. I just threw an arbitrary number. Um, 
as far as the part-timers, the part-time budget I just, or the hourly budget, I just did the same thing. Um, not knowing what coal it was gonna be, I guess that's decided yeah, after the fact. So I really don't have much mm -hmm. to say about those right now. Any questions on those first two? All right, going down to the radio fees. Um, thankfully, uh, Fire Chief went first, so I don't have to really explain much about the radios. They are going up. Um, the intel that I've got is that FERCOG will not increase them for 24, 25. But it is the government, and Lord knows what happens. So that one, every ended level funded, I did put a $25 increase on postage. Um, I honestly don't know if I'm going to actually need that $25 now because snooping around in the cabinets, I found a bunch of envelopes that already have stamps on them. So I realized, <laughs> rubber stamps. hey, I might as well use those. So that is saved on my stamp usage. Um, one thing that I have initiated this year where I'm using more stamps is when I find out that our town resident has passed away, we have some like sympathy cards mm -hmm. that Kenny Womet bought and never used. I dusted them all off and opened them up and figured I might as well start using it. And I also bought some thank you cards for people that donate money type of thing. So um, the biggest increase on that is going to be for uh, mailing out uh, license to carry FID card stuff that I get to mail out to the state. Some of them I can email, so that's good. Uh, moving down to the dues. Um, I increased that not knowing mostly what the Mass Chiefs of Police Association is going to do. They wanted to do a huge increase this year. And again, they decide in December what their increase is going to be. So even though like we at all, all Franklin County and area, this Western Massachusetts, we're all small towns. We have budgeted X amount of dollars. So when they want to go up $500, we can't do that. So thankfully our chief from Deerfield is, is a big advocate on the Mass Chiefs on the executive board. He fought for all of us small towns out here and says, you just can't do that to us. So he got it to a $50 increase. I don't know what next year is going to be. Um, IACP is the International Association of Chiefs of Police. I always thought Kenny was part of that and it's been highly suggested through the Mass Chiefs and Western Mass Chiefs that we should all belong to that as well because there's a lot of good information from them. And I think I can swing it for the $1,200 that I have this year. But again, I just threw in the extra 200 because I don't know what Mass Chief is gonna do. I think Western Mass went up a little bit too. Uh, let's see, going on to training. I have level funded that one. So far I'm doing pretty good on that. And I've been taking a lot of classes to try to just get up to par. Um, one class I was gonna go to last week was a grant writing class, which I thought would be very helpful. But, you know, God decided to have a storm, have a forbid. So um, I turned around and came back to town as opposed to going to the class because I thought my services would be better rendered to the town of Conway as opposed to sitting in a class. So I talked to them, I was able to get it postponed. So I will be going to that down the road. Uh, let's see, gasoline, I didn't do anything. I left it where it was. Uh, let's see, supplies. Supplies, I went up to $2,500. And if you notice, I have an equipment and a supplies. For some reason, equipment got wiped out. I don't know why. So a lot of my equipment gets put in with supplies. So my supplies and equipment are like, bug. Mm -hmm. So, so I had so a little bit of increase there. And stuff's just getting more expensive across the board. Uh, let's see. Cruiser maintenance. Oh, you didn't change that though. You increased the wrong one to four thousand dollars. Oh, the software. Yeah. Okay, so this should be four thousand. It should be thirty-five. Yeah. Okay, then. But that said, level funded. Because when I met with you, it was level funded, and you're like, well, maybe we should go up to four. Oh, <laughs> what's that? Mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so four thousand. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Okay, and then it was at. Uh, it was thirty-three thousand. Thirty-three. Okay. No, just three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that that was definitely my suggestion, given how much 
change, change the level funded description. Yeah. <coughs> Easy enough. There you go. <laughs> right, it's, when it comes to the cruiser, it's a crap. <coughs> um, we've had a lot of issues with it, and I'm, I still got another one that I've got to address come the spring when it starts to get warm because we have no air conditioner. Mm -hmm. That pooped out on us again. Um, so I'm still trying to block that line right now. I don't have to worry about it because we don't use it. Um, but it's, it doesn't have a ton of miles on it, but just it's an old cruiser. It's a 2018 cruiser. So it's starting to have its age and starting to show some of that wear and tear on it. Um, as far as the mileage, it's great. But when you figure, <clears throat> and I had it written down, I don't know where I put it. You all right over there? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Winged it. It's coming back for you. It's horrible. How did you even do that? Why is there even a fly? It's 20 degrees <laughs> outside. So, so back to the cruiser. We have approximately 61,000 miles on there. Um, but idle hours, which they figure for every hour of idle is equivalent to 32 miles. Yeah. Don't ask me who came up with that, but some people way smarter than I. Wait, so having your car idle for an hour is equivalent to putting 32, 32 miles, miles on okay. So if you idle for two hours, you get 64 right. miles okay. added to it. So when you add up our engine hours, and again, I had this figure and I don't know where it went, um, we're roughly sitting at a, I want to say like 400,000 miles. So that's where things are starting to go. Um, my mechanic, because I stopped going to the Chevy dealer because I thought they were screwing me. Um, especially when I went there to have a right, or excuse me, a left wheel bearing, a driver's side wheel bearing replaced. I'm not a mechanic, so I explained to him, like, this is what I was told. You guys are the mechanics, you do your thing. They replaced the right one. Yeah. And on it says, can't find any noise replaced on customer request. So we're having a little argument back and forth, which they haven't acknowledged me in the last seven months, six months, so I'm just, maybe they won't send me a bill for it. Which Chevy dealership is this? We won't be there. Going down that road. Well, no, just. It might be in Franklin County. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, so this is, I'm a little gun shy going in. So we have a mechanic here in town that I go to. Good. I trust him. Good, good. Our check engine light came on, that went off, and came on, it was flashing, that went off. So I brought it up to him. Fuel injectors need replacing. Mm -hmm. And he goes, it's one thing, you can replace one fuel injector, but then you're gonna have to replace the next. So you're just chasing it around the car. And you don't know how long you could go, you could have to replace all eight of them within a year, six months, a month. So he ordered all eight of them. They haven't come in because of course, like everything else with a the car, they're back with it. So we're hoping that the cruiser's gonna run good until we need them. So he will have them for us. So that's when I was talking to her. She's like, well, maybe we should go up to $4,000. It's my fault. You definitely need AC. Sure. I mean, that's like. There, there is a capital request for a new cruiser. Uh, moving on to software, I went up a minimal amount on that. Um, software is another thing with our computer programs that we have. We don't know where they're going to be coming in. We were on a FERCOG, but then I guess FERCOG's like, nope, we're not doing that anymore. The state, not FERCOG, the state was paying some of it, but then they decided they weren't going to pay some of it or all of it or kind of going by the whim of, of them. And the clothing or uniforms, I went up $500. Primary reason behind this is because we're gonna have to get somebody else on board. Clothing is not cheap now. Like this shirt, as you see, is about $95 to $100. There, it's crazy. Does that include the badge? <laughs> yep, yeah, as you see it here, which is all, it's sewn in. Wow. Yeah. I like wearing these because then when I have to go yeah. on a call, I just dump a shirt or my vest over it. Mm -hmm. So, wow. and it's more comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but your pants are expensive, your shirt's expensive. So it's just, it's crazy money. Yeah. A lot of 
So of my $1,000 that was allocated, I think I have $8.32 remaining. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping nobody needs anything. Yeah. No pants for the... Yeah. Yeah. So if you see me running around in this underwear on, please, just, it's okay, it's Conway and I didn't have the money for it. It wasn't in the budget. Luckily I have lots of pants left over from my previous job. But other things too, um, I'm trying, I'd also like to get us more in line with a lot of other departments, um, which every, state police have this color, this is a state police color. As much as I like the state police, and those guys are really great, they're awesome backup, I don't want to be construed as a state trooper. Mm -hmm. I'm a Conway police officer. So the majority of towns have gone to the dark navy blue uniform shirt. So when I show up to a chief's meeting and I'm one of the only ones wearing this color shirt, it's kind of embarrassing. I'm like, sorry, right, just me over here. Um, so that's something I want to look into doing at some point Either the dark navy blue is sort of the Amish undertaker aesthetic, though. I don't know. Hey, a piece of powder blue we used to have. Does Conway have an official color? Town color? Well, the blue, the the grammar school colors are blue and yellow, but they're sort of a like Ukraine sky blue kind of a thing. Oh, okay. like, yeah, I'm not going back to that color. Uh, Sorry. I, I know a guy in town that has a ton of tie dye available. <laughs> that's Conway right there. <laughs> no, that's Wendell. That's Wendell. Exactly. I'm not going to Wendell. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 From the previous year for a total of $3,700. Sorry, this is not what I have on here because she yeah. increased it. Yours well, is right. Hopefully no, yours is right. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's calculated. Is. Well, yeah, it's calculated, but did she do the, <laughs> the formula <laughs> correct? It appears so. Anyway, it looks right. Any questions on what I've thrown out there? Yeah, throw, so the police and chief should probably, and the fire should probably go up the same for gasoline. I think it should be an increase for gasoline. I, I will say that the $5,500, I probably won't be coming near it. Okay. So I and I just went road across, road? Kenny's had that for right. mm -hmm. since 2001, okay. or right. 21. So I left it there. My fuel expenditures aren't aren't even there yet. That's because the air conditioning was working. You had the windows open. I like the way you're thinking. Even but though it if, doesn't take much of the fuel efficiency away. But if you think that you're not going to, that there's really not a chance of coming near it, it's okay to reduce it. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not reducing anything that Kenny didn't already reduce ahead of me. And again, this is my first time doing okay. it. So I don't want to reduce anything right. and get caught with my pants down. Yeah, I don't. I don't Especially think if you're short on pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a point. So when we were at Conway Grammar, we had a little bit of a sidebar about maybe some additional equipment. I'm assuming those will probably be capital requests. Yes, and I don't know what fiscal year that's going to be. Okay. okay. So, Got it. Um, it's on the horizon, things that I want to do is one is the cruiser. I would really like to get another cruiser. Um, and just statistically speaking, when the cruiser was broken, I don't know why I have broken, but when it was broken in March 16th of 22 through April 20th of 22, I think that's when Kenny got crushed in the front end in Irving at coming back from a chief's meeting. We missed 34 calls because of that. We just couldn't go on because we didn't have a cruiser. Mm -hmm. To me, that's unacceptable mm -hmm. because the residents are mm -hmm. wanting me to provide a service that I could not provide. Mm -hmm. um, so having a backup cruiser would be highly beneficial in that aspect. Um, just in the short time that I had it out to get the work done on it that didn't need to be fixed, we missed four calls. Um, the good time, the good part about that is I was in town and Randy Williams, who's also a part-time schedule for 20 hours a week, he was on vacation, so it didn't matter. But my big thing is if we're down a cruiser, 
I'm on salary. I can find stuff to do. There is so much crap for me to do. I can stay busy for 40 hours a week in the office. I can't say the same for Randy. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with him? Do we pay him to stay home and watch TV? Like, I, I don't know. I'm looking for guidance here. Or if we had another cruiser, we could go back to, okay, well, good, here we go. I don't want people to be using their own cars. I don't think that's good practice at all. So I did have a bead on a nice cruiser that would have been awesome for us until that department blew up the transmission. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a great fit for us. But it is what it is. I can't fix that. You know, back in the day, you just, you know, take the light and put it back on, on top of your car, streets of San Francisco, <laughs> you know? You go yep. pretend you're undercover and... <laughs> I used to, I did that in Asheville when I first started. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that means when, when a lot, so that explains why Deerfield showed up a couple of times uh, to Conway Emergencies last late, late, late winter, early spring. Yeah, plus they're, they're a great mutual aid. Um, but they don't bill us for it, do they? Nope. We're, lucky. We're very lucky. No, nope. same thing like if I have to go down there. We don't bill it. It's part of the mutual aid thing. Right. And they're not for extended periods of time. Yep. Um, the other capital request I'm going to go for, forward with eventually is going to be uh, body-worn cameras mm -hmm. and tasers. I think it's kind of a combined thing. Um, it's not a mandate yet in the state, so I'm kind of... I'm following yeah. Deerfield on this one, <laughs> to a certain extent. We, we've been talking about that for a few years because our insurance company recommends it uh, for liability reasons, for protection of officers from yes. lawsuits. Right. Yep. Um, and it's huge. And it's huge. It benefits us more than you yeah. know. Yeah. More than and, we know. and when um, we talked about this with with Kenny, you know, he, he he really wanted to do it too. At the time, he said the big holdup was the amount of. Um, uh, hardware, the computer hardware that you need for the memory, the, the amount of memory that, yeah. that is required yeah. to store those that things. That has changed it, now. So I know, again, I'm going to compare it to Weebly a lot because that's what I know. They just went to new tasers and body-worn cameras, all from the same company. Excuse me. All their storage is on the cloud. So literally, you, if you pull your taser out automatically, or your gun or your taser, it automatically starts the body camera, so you don't have to worry about it or think about it. But then when you're done, it uploads that to the cloud. So there is no coming back, taking your camera off, sitting yeah. on the docking yeah. station, mm -hmm. loading it to your laptop, mm -hmm. having a hard drive, because mm -hmm. yeah. that's what we were doing prior to going to this new system. That's crazy. But that system's not cheap. Yeah, because they still charge you for the cloud and storage, charge and you're probably cloud. required to keep for archival purposes, yep. like, mm -hmm. certainly. Yep. And do you know how much is that system? So Waitley spent $55,000 up front, and I don't think that was for the entire thing. I think that was for the first couple years, but they also had 10 tasers and 10 body cameras, and I don't need that many. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I haven't worried about that yet. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I'm going to start. I also, part of the reason why I want to look at this grant writing class is because there's grants out there for this. Mm -hmm. So that's where I want to mm -hmm. try getting money from. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I'm, I really would like to do too is update our handguns because they are getting old. And although we don't use them a lot, it's old. And we are carrying 45s, and I'd like to go to a 9 millimeter. My yeah. next question <laughs> would be, if we want to incorporate that system, uh, when are we planning? Do we have some idea or for the liability? Liability of what? The oh, town liability, liability insurance town policies. Insurance. We would get a we reduction, a, a modest, very modest reduction in premiums, if I remember my conversation with our rep mm -hmm. um, from a few years back. but. It would not significantly offset the cost of purchasing, yeah. but the avoiding, it's one of those things you really can't put a price tag on the lawsuits that aren't filed against you. Um, but that's one of the, that's one of the, the benefits that you would, you know. The biggest thing that we saw down at Waitley was when you'd have a resident get stopped by one of our officers, 
and the resident would go to the chief and be like, your officer was rude, he was disrespectful, he was up one side of me, down the other, and the chief's like, all right, it's video recorded, I'll go back and look. Well, you know, it wasn't as bad. <laughs> so it cut down a lot. Yeah, yeah. But there's some officers that don't like having them because they think Big Brother's watching them all the time. They are. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I wouldn't use it as a disciplinary. I'd use it more as a training. Like, right. yeah. Yeah. hey, you're not in trouble for this, but I looked at your camera and maybe you could do this a little bit better. Maybe you could try this tactic or mm -hmm. talk to them a little bit nicer. So, but when it comes time for those bigger purges, I've never done this, so I don't know when that was. Verony mentioned this morning that I probably want to be prepared to talk about the cruiser, and I was like, oh, I haven't talked to anybody else about it. And I thought that would be sitting down with you, whoever's on Capital Planet, to talk about that. Feb 7, we have a meeting at Feb 7. Feb 7. You want me there for that? 4.30? Yeah. Monday. It is not a Monday. And I'm teaching a class on the 7th. Uh, let me double check. Yeah, I think that's a Tuesday. Well, what time, though? Mm -hmm. Seven, there's a Wednesday. It's uh, February 5th right. at 4.30. 4.30. I have a previous engagement on that day as well. We also have one on February 12th at 4.30. That one I could do. I'll put with the dawn. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not trying to ask for anything huge. I'm trying to keep it realistic. Yeah. Um, I am open for. Thoughts, concerns, suggestions? Grants, 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 grants. Ah. <laughs> well, let me hear about them, let me hear about them, let me hear about them. Yeah. So I did get notification of some grants, and luckily, you know, or thankfully, when the chiefs would all send them to me back in like September, they'd send them to me on the 3rd, and they were due on the 4th. Oh. I'm like, really? Yeah. Well, I sent it to you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, another grant I got was for some radio, and I was gonna buy a charging station. But by the time I got the quote back from the guy I needed to get the quote back from, it was closed. Um, I have also heard of one grant that we can buy a cruiser from, but I don't have any record or any knowledge of that yet. But that chief told me that he let me know. It usually comes out in spring, I think he said. USDA grant. Oh, maybe. USDA, yeah, they're doing it they usually in March, by the end of March. So, but that's something, because I know that town of Plainfield has gotten a cruiser. Oh, from the USDA? Off the USDA yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing that. That would be the big one that we want to look yeah. into. Yeah. You think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Community, well, community facilities grant. If that's the same one that I looked into when they talked about being able to get fire trucks and that Conway doesn't qualify. Because of income? Yeah. We get a 50% loan was the last. It may not be the same oh, one, but if yeah. it's USDA, my guess is it is. Yeah. And unfortunately. <laughs> They consider us to be too wealthy to get. Yeah. It's worth looking into, yeah. though. It might oh, be different. And, definitely. Um, and just to throw out, I did get a quote on three cruisers. I got a quote on a Chevy Tahoe, a Ford F-150, and the Ford Police Interceptor Utility, PIU. The uh, the Tahoe came in at roughly 80000 just under eighty. There are some things that I don't want that I've gone through. The F-150, which is the one that I kind of really like to have for Conway, I think it'd fit really well up here, was 74. And then the PIU, which is like the Ford Explorer mm -hmm. chassis, was 67, 68. Those are just rough estimates. Those are all 4 by 4s Yes. Okay. Yes. One's an all-wheel drive. The PIU is all we drive. And that's a gas engine. Somebody asked me about a hybrid, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I've been hearing horror stories yeah. of them. Yeah. One of them's in Deerfield. I have not heard a good thing about them yet. So, great technology, I just don't think it's there. 
especially for up this way. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? Anybody? All other things being equal, less expensive is always better. <laughs> Sometimes, sure. sometimes other sure. things are not expensive. Sometimes you're going to look at durability. Yeah. 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 Might be less expensive. Yeah. It's going to cost you longer <laughs> in the overall pool. Yeah. Longer. That's what I said. That's why I qualified it with all other things being equal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not. But, but yeah. Okay. Thanks. Y'all fill me in what we have to do next, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> February 12th for your capital planning meeting. Very really helpful. What's that? February 12th for the Capital Planning Committee is helpful because uh, when do all capital budget requests have to be submitted? When's, when's the deadline? Right? Sometimes they were supposed in the to have been in by January 8th, but we're a little okay. behind I, I, this year. I gave mine. You have the new form? Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know if Bob just said he doesn't have any. So now we have. Oh, and EMS doesn't have any. Yeah, so, so really I think it's you pretty right. much said. Down okay. to Iowa. Yeah. It would be helpful to get some type of a. A quote, work up a quote maybe for uh, so you have a more definitive number. Yeah, the one time. you gave, the quote you gave, the one on the, the uh, request you sent me is not based on those cruisers you just mentioned. What? I think it was like for 65 or 55 or something like that. It's going to have to end. That was for the one that they blew up the transmission. Right. Yeah. Mm. All right. So yeah. Your, your request is going to have to I gave you another one because I have that fancy dancy new sheet you gave me. Oh, you did? You sent it to me? Yes. This one. Let me look here. Do I need to do it again? It shows up with the receipts and everything. Make sure. <laughs> I'm usually very good at this. So it's very neat. The Did last you get sent one? to me? Because no, 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 the four thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. That includes <laughs> all the up upgrades uh, and all that. But it's yeah, that, all the upfitting. So like your cage okay. in there. Um, like one of the things that I'd like to do is. If, is as opposed to a full cage between the front seat and then one of the back seats. It's what they call a half cage. Mm -hmm. So if you have a prisoner, you just throw them on one side mm -hmm. and it kind of keeps them contained. They can't flop all around. It gives us more storage as well. And the last I have is from October. So you might want to check your scent box. I swear I handed it to somebody. You might have. Okay. I don't know. I can read it. Yeah, if you don't mind. Because I remember putting a, a, a range in there of like 67 to 80. Look again here. And I know it was on that form. Because I thought that. Uh, Don, it's, it's Roy. Hi, Roy. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hey. So uh, when you come in for the capital uh, uh, improvements meeting, can you uh, bring an estimated, you know, miles per year that you think you're going to run or, or that you ran this year um, and one of the things that um, you I just went through this um, uh, yeah well I, yeah maybe um, maybe look at an extended warranty on the on these two because um, with the cost of the electronics, um, they kind of, you know, if you put an extended warranty on it when the thing is brand new, uh, you might get, you know, you might get five or even six years of, um, you know, no cost other than maintenance on the thing. So maybe you could bring that, you know, look that stuff up. I will do my best. I okay. found it. Thank that, you. I found it. <laughs> it came from Veronique. The date on it is wrong, but it came from Veronique. Yeah. You put the wrong year on out of there, Don. <laughs> now I can take it off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was like, it made me one, think one, I had one, 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 three. Everyone does that. Everyone does that. On January 1st. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. Thank you. Oops. Well, I was in 23 when I was in. Thank you. Any more questions? Roy, any more questions, comments? Yeah. Yeah. No. No? When was that? Okay. Oh. Oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. Very soft. 430. I'll send you a uh, cheap bait. I'll send you a email. Sweet. Yeah, no, we're happy to show up. Thank you, Chief.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you would have room margin for error for non attendance vacations and whatnot. Yeah. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We still got a couple more things. See you next see you next week. Thanks. See you guys. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Really what enticed me was these new chairs. There you go. Those are yeah, those are right. a huge improvement. Exactly. Stay a little longer. Could use a capital request to replace all the ones at the elementary school. <laughs> Only like five thousand dollars. People would be a lot nicer. Part of the whole problem. This is my theory. People start getting nasty after forty-five minutes because everybody's butt hurt. No. Who is the first talk's new um, procurement person since Andrea Woods? Ellen Dash Sheldon. She's. Yeah. So the dis so everybody's looking at right now at the FERCOG highway bid thing. So let's just talk about that then. Um, so this is this is an annual uh, an annual thing would to participate with the FERCOG on uh, collective highway bids. Uh, it's FERCOG, so there is a fee. And for us, it would be two thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. I am told that it's worth doing. So, um, but it's, you know, salt, sand. Um, guardrail stuff, things like that. And we go through more guardrail stuff than you'd think. But car accidents chew up guardrails and we have to replace them. It happens a lot. Um, Yeah, so that's. All right, well, I move to approve um, the FERCOG contract for. For uh, yes. year 25. Um, I'll second. The fee probably pays for itself with the savings. Yeah, hard to say. It's the, the it's it's convenient. I know it's convenient too. So, um, did you make a motion? I did. You got a, a motion second. and a second. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. So this only requires. Actually, no. We're all going to sign it. Whether or not it's hard to say whether it's required or not. It's a confusing signature page. Yeah. Cool. So the DLTA authority, what, what's this DLTA stand for again? District Local Technical Assistance. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know what good these forms really do. It gives information to the FERCOG. I don't know whether 
Well, I don't know how successful we've been in the past. In Very. Actually, the River Corridor, they're asking for a renewal this year because they've been working on it with the FERCOT already, and they feel they can't finish. This is planning and CONCON. This is separate from the three that you wanted from us for priorities, right? Correct. Okay. This is Correct. just what we can get from the FERCOT, right? So the um, t uh, planning is great. Um, you know, saving people's homes and their life savings is more important to me um, but uh, and the the recommendations of the Board of Health the recommendations of all the people that are writing in today with the correspondence etc the recommendation of all the people that were at the Saturday meeting the um, floodwater infrastructure FERCA can help with uh, regional region-wide engineering and um, that would be my my big priority. So I don't. I like the form. I like the, the board of health all, all all said the same thing. I like their form. Um, but that's so. Question: I see the Deerfield River management on here. Nothing about the South. We're part of the Deerfield River corridor. Uh, uh, water set. Okay. Um, yeah, except that unless I'm mistaken, we have ours in 2020, and I just forwarded that on to somebody. Oh, so, so I think we're we've been done. We've been done, we're done. but um, the one you know what I what I did find out on Saturday when what he talked about was that how the one the one that the FERCOG recommended that they would have engineered and replaced, um, and it would have been an increase in size was the culvert that the town just paid on its own to fix at the intersection of Emerson Hollow Road and Shelvin Falls Road. And when they approached our highway department at that time, uh, they were told, you're making a problem where there is none, this one's just fine. And it was refused. They did find a place in on Baptist Corner Road in Ashfield that it fit just fine and Ashfield accepted it. But that um, I did not know that we turned down a culvert uh, that had been geohydrologically like recommended for us with from data and planning and everything. And when did we? I don't know. I haven't heard of this before. And uh, that was part of. That was and, and that was really that's not good. It's not good. Um, but it's gone. It was offered to us for free. It's part of what the whole. Uh, you know. Uh, that the, the highway report that we were talking about for that um, endeavor running procured and that we got in October about the uh, the Pine Hill Upper Baptist Hill stormwater management that called for moving water down to down Emerson Hollow to whatever and the, one of the objections was that culvert isn't big enough well, what is it big enough and we just would have said yes I, th I think we should request to get to the front of that queue whether we're on this list or not, given that the culvert assessment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They were done in 2020, so, so I. So in, in 2020, they offered they. No, 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 that the assessment of all of our culverts. I have that right, report. Okay. I can send to you. So I don't believe. So when did they offer to do? I don't. I have no idea. This is the first time. I think you said this. 2021 is when it was offered to us. Like a fish. I mean. I. I but they, they they spoke with yeah. Ron. Not anybody else in town. So it was done in 2020 and they offered it again the next year? No, no, no. There's two different things. There was an actual culvert replacement they offered, but this is the assessment. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have the assessment report from 2020, which is probably why they offer something in 21, because they just done the assessment and knew the needs. That would be my guess. But, but I can forward that to you all, because I did just forward it to somebody. Um, the 2020. Oh, actually, you know what? It's on the town website now, under the um, mm -hmm. South River flood mitigation. Okay, so so we can only pick top the top, top three, three for this. Well, which one is the mo is the one that most meets regional coordination to manage flood risk of the on the Deerfield River? I mean, I, but that's not really. I mean, that's. Not really stormwater management. Yeah, it was. Them, um, kills. But I, I will say that both the CONCOM, well, CONCOM sustainability and 
planning all requested the river corridor management zoning so they can so, finish that yeah. project. I mean, I would say, yeah, that's definitely, like, just I'm trying to figure out what else falls underneath, um, like, what else could we, which of these priorities could we also fit stormwater management underneath? Emergency. Yeah, I don't know that there is a particular one for that. Maybe after all the flooding this year, they'll create one for next year. service sharing other um, I, I mean based upon what I've heard from Chief Baker too is the I mean succession planning which is I mean have I guess that doesn't really totally yeah I mean I think I think that would be a priority too is or to go along with that service sharing yeah. municipal service sharing feasibility. I mean, I think that's the long-term solution for the small towns that mm -hmm. aren't getting volunteers anymore, which is unfortunate given the size of the, ge the geographical size of our towns. We actually do much better with volunteers than our neighboring towns. Well, we have historically, but I think it's true. I mean, like, you know, Bob said, people are moving out of town. and. I mean, the fire department has historically been huge. In yeah, there's too many kids going to college. I've got to stop that stuff. Well, you'd have to pick one of all of those different ones. So, in the shared service feasibility study, is there one in particular? We, oh, Public safety, if you're looking at Yeah, I'd say fire services and ambulance. I mean, do we have to pick one of those public safeties or just public safety? I, I would think it's just public safety. Public safety and other because it's flood water management, flood water infrastructure, engineering management. Oh well, this I'm just talking specifically about dealing with you know vacancies in the fire department and a lack of you know emergency personnel just because of our shrinking, you know. I'm with you. I'm just wondering what would be better the succession planning or the service sharing. I mean, I think the. We, we are, we, we have really, um, the, the thing about fire and ambulance is, uh, and police is we have excellent relationships with our neighboring towns and all of those things. And we have municipal aid in our part of the county is really strong. That's true. Um, and that we're, uh, and we have such a history of giving more than what, we're, than what we get that um, when we do ask, they all come. And um, it's, it, you know, we actually, uh, I did find it, we, we recently went on our longest mutual aid, uh, just in terms of mileage, um, that our, our tanker truck went like way across the state. But, and that's because the, the need for, there's actually fewer and fewer departments that have tanker trucks and there was a need for it to go like far. I forget what the it's town like was. Was North Attleboro? Or something, some it, yeah, it was like was, far away. Yeah, it was and, and I mean, our, Pumper trucks recently were in Monroe. They, I mean, they, they were, were going far and wide, and they're coming, and that's really, um, it's it's all across our region that the, the the dearth in numbers. And, um, but for years and years, we were the envy of all of our neighboring towns. I mean, we not that long ago we had like thirty active firefighters, and Waitley had three, and I still had two, and stuff like that. Um, so I think there's a cyclical nature to it. And you know we the, our our juniors program was always limited to ten or twelve or something like that. And so when you have eight of them that are the same age and they all go to college the same year, like that's gonna it's gonna be a little bit to build that up and to have them come through again and all that. Well, another another part on here that would have to do with that is the regional municipal wage and classification study. Yeah, to find out competing. We want, to, we want to do away with that, 
So we, we went through that in 2016, and the select board didn't adopt the recommendations, so which typically, typically happens, unfortunately. <laughs> I think in terms of the, the flood, and, and a number of the different committees did both check off the regional coordination and manage flood risks on the Deerfield River, as well as the river border management zoning. So, I mean, both of those would probably... We're doing a lot on that. We've, we've been so busy on that. I, I, I mean, I don't care. I, I, I just want... The only thing that I want that I care about is flood water, infrastructure, engineering. Well, like, yeah. I mean, we, stormwater, stormwater. Yeah, can we... Stormwater. Um, the recent floods, the whole last year's well, floods, it was not the river that was the So problem. it doesn't say stormwater there, but it does say work with neighboring watershed towns to prioritize and implement appropriate river corridor management strategies, flood resiliency, and infrastructure improvements, all of which that's sound to me like... Stormwater. What you're talking about. That's exactly what we want. So that's why... That's I, what I've been saying. <laughs> yes, <laughs> hey, let's so pick that one. Yeah, let's, let's pick, pick that one. I like that one. <laughs> That well, one. But also our municipal project priorities. Identify your top municipal grant writing project which priorities. We can say that the top priority should be writing, finding grants, finding grant programs that will cover some of this engineering because that's what, I mean, that's what we have. We've also heard from a lot of the residents too is people who've said like, I'm an engineer, I've done this stuff. You know, people in the neighborhood who have yeah, feel I mean, like they've identified places where you know possible funding sources. And we can't let um, people say anymore that they haven't been an engineer since 1979, so they don't want to do yeah. it. We just have to make them do it. Jeff Lacey, so are, 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 we, <laughs> are we are you good with those as two of the ones that you picked? The regional coordination and the river corridor management. Yeah, and then if there would be one more that you need to pick for that whatever the planning thing was that they wanted. Yeah. That was what the planning wanted. Uh, the Board of Health had three others. Yeah, well, they, but one of which was storm was stormwater. So what was the other two? Uh, yeah, stormwater management, abandoned properties, and adult services, older s adult services, which meant transportation. Yeah, abandoned properties is a problem in this town. It is. Yes. And also, so that's under, properties yeah. that are not abandoned but not being utilized is an even bigger problem. So this is under municipal and regional capacity building, abandoned and distressed property inventory and action. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm fine with that. Those three? Yep. yep. Is that the vote of the board? Mm -hmm. Those three? Okay. <laughs> All right. Any particular order of... Storm, Storm water. water. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But on but on page eight too, definitely. Again, reiterate. I think that's where there's the opportunity to reiterate that that's a priority. Right for for engine finding grants for engineering. engineering. Yeah, engineering. Engineering stormwater Storm management solutions. Yep. Okay. Now it says on the meeting minutes that, that this has to be a vote. All in favor. Uh, Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Aye. Um, Chris, Erica, you yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, there was a couple, so uh, there was the um, town administrator update. We got your update. There was a couple things about that. The one that you went to the dam, the mm -hmm. dam workshop. Um, and to find out that because it's a state dam, I, I don't know where you left it from there. I and I, I remember talking to you and the board about this for the past couple of years. The high that I gotten a call from the DEP has an office of dam removal that focuses on removing state owned dams. And that I, I talked to you, Ronnie, because we they have a list of top 10 most desirable state owned dams that they want to remove. We are on that list. They have a $500 million fund that was appropriated like four years ago that there's been not enough takers. They have money, etc. And so now that we're starting to sort of get this as a please call the op DEP, Office of Dam Removal, um, and is that the what the select board wants me to do? Call the Office of Dam Removal and Dam Right. <laughs> <laughs> and get the ball rolling. Okay. 
to the extent that, I mean, they, that's all, I think all that they were looking for was sort of an expression of interest and whatever, but. Um, the Office of Dam. There's an office, the DEP okay. has an Office of Dam Removal. It's in Worcester. was there. Uh, what else was in your report that, that I wanted to come in on? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what else? So the, the mail, we got a bunch of what, what, what? That's my report if you want to look yeah, at it. Yeah, um, we got uh, Festival of the Hills. All right. Um, so been back and forth with the festival um, about becoming a town committee again. Uh, Donna did just, our town council did just weigh in with a couple of comments of her own. I think I, I, I did address those with her. Um, that, but there, it appears that the festival is interested um, in becoming a town committee again. And so there is a specific, it would have to go before town meeting it is a local acceptance statute, um, but it is the the path forward is was set up. This was like from 2017. I was like sending out an email to people, to Donna and everything that I received from uh, from the division of local assistance in like 2017 as the path forward, and I was able to find it. I didn't think I could find it, but I did find it um, as the path forward to make it legal because at the time that they were doing that. We weren't doing it in the way that that law required us to. Um, plus, the select board chair at the time just did not want this to be part of the town anymore. And that was a whole separate thing. But um, the statute's not that, you know, it's, it's the select board would appoint four people. The superintendent would have a role in it of schools. Um, he believes that he could designate someone to act on his behalf. I don't even know. For the scholarships. Does, for, oh, sco okay. for scholarship, because mm -hmm. it would technically be a stop, it would be the Festival of the Hills Scholarship Committee. Um, but there is there's significant reasons why it would be a good thing for them. A, when we send out our tax bills, they would they would lawful, be one of the very few lawful things that we could put into our tax bills besides the bill is a request that people donate to them. Um, B, um, they, instead of having to Rate, you know, rate the first eight hundred or nine hundred dollars of what they raise have to pay for their own insurance. The port, the town would get a much better rate than they're able to get as a private organization. They wouldn't have to pay that. See, they wouldn't have to pay for police protection or ambulance, um, and so the money that they raise would go towards scholarships instead of overhead. And they are a five hundred one c three now, right? They are. Yeah. But. Um, you know, the cost to them is the open meeting compliance with the open meeting law and they're, the new membership, especially the senior levels of that membership, the Pixie Holbrook and the Sue McDonald, they're not afraid of open meeting and having to post an agenda. They're grizzled veterans in that regard. So, um, but they have new blood, they have a bunch of new members um, and they're, they see the benefits in becoming part of a town committee and since 1915 they were a town committee and my whole thing is that like, it makes sense. It's that it's such a huge part of the town's identity. It's, you know, you come up 116, so it says Festival of Ales and a giant billboard. So, and so um, I'd like to see it happen. And um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if uh, we'll see how it goes. I see see whether Donna has a based on recent conversation whether she has any actual firm objections or whether. It's just a sense of unease about it because she had said she wasn't familiar with that statute, but she is now. She's getting familiar with it. So, um, but that's it. So I look forward to that happening if it's possible. Something else to talk about at town meeting, but at least something I think everybody would really be in favor. Of. Um, so that was. I want to talk about that too. So I'm done. Um, um, select board member comments, concerns, anybody. The, the mail was uh, Lori Block, John Baptist Hill, John Dixon, Fields Hill. Um, I don't know whether the e I brought I printed out the email from the two people on Cricket Hill, but they're all the same thing. Just 
flood water man, flood water, flood water, flood water, storm water, storm water, storm water, do something about it. It's the water coming off the roads, wrecking the roads, wrecking everything. Just do something. So it's, that is the hue and cry of our citizens. Uh, next meeting, February 5th, same time, same bat channel. Emotion. What, what? Sorry, I just wanted to mention my apologies. I did send you all the draft of the thank you letter and then didn't bring it in tonight. Oh, no. For, so we can do that next week if you want. Thank yous are starting to get stale. Just you don't get stale. Thank yous are always good. Um, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you Monday. Thank you. Thank you.